Ford is pushing into premium territory with this Mondeo Vignali model. This is more than just an upmarket version of the Mondeo, says Ford. The premium exterior look matched by a handcrafted interior and a VIP after-sales service to add to the luxury experience. We know the family favourite Mondeo is great to drive, so a plusher, better equipped version should tick all the boxes. But does it? The medium range Mondeo class segment has been under attack for some years now and it still is. In their droves, customers who once would have signed off on another conventional large family five door almost without thinking are often now more drawn to cars of other kinds. Some of these models are MPVs, SUVs or Qashqai class crossovers but the main shift has been towards prestigiously badged compact executive contenders like BMW 3 Series, Mercedes C-Class and Audi A4. For a business buyer in particular, choosing a model of this sort is almost expected these days. The thought of considering something like a Ford Mondeo in preference would usually be inconceivable, however plushly the car was specified. But could that change? Well, the Blue Oval brand reckons it might with this car the Mondeo Vignale. Now you might quite correctly think that Ford has been here before. Uh, back in the 70s, the company acquired the Italian Gear Styling Studio and uh, subsequently used that badge as a top trim level on its mainstream models. Less well known is the fact that in the same period, Ford also inherited ownership of another famous Italian brand, the Turin Coach Building Company, established in 1948 by Alfredo Vignale, uh, creator of bespoke Ferraris and Alfa Romeos. Uh, for the last few decades, the Vignale badge has been kept up Ford's sleeve, wheeled out only occasionally on concept cars and motor show prototypes. Now, though, it's essentially going to be the Detroit makers a premium brand. And to start with, that means ultimate edition versions of the company's S-Max MPV, Cougar Crossover, Edge SUV, and most importantly, this Mondeo. Now, I've used the phrase ultimate edition. This has to mean more than merely a top trim level. If it doesn't, then the market will simply dismiss this car and its Vignale stablemates as ordinary models with ideas above their station. Now, don't do that before you've checked out what's on offer here. Yes, this is a Mondeo with just about every conceivable extra thrown at it. But it's also, we're told, a car in its own right, with a very distinct, more upmarket personality and an interior fashioned by a team of six dedicated craftsmen. Plus, it's sold in a way that no blue oval brand model ever has been before. You'll buy from a dedicated Vignale lounge at your Ford dealership and you'll have your own customer relationship executive who will be on first name terms with you throughout your period of ownership via a 24 hour hotline. On paper, then, it's a very interesting proposition that other mainstream brands will doubtless be monitoring with interest. But is it interesting enough to tempt business buyers away from the premium branded compact executive models that are available at this price point? Well, that's what we're here to find out. It's a Mondeo, so it's gonna drive just like any other Mondeo. That's probably what you're thinking. Well, the Vignali experience, though, amounts to more than that, even if the changes brought are quite subtle ones. Let me explain. Uh, we should start by pointing out that there are some things here which really shouldn't be different from any other Mondeo. Ford's mainstream large family five door has a fully deserved reputation for a great ride, great handling and for comfort and is a brilliant starting point for any new model. From that beginning, Ford takes each and every Vignale away to a special centre at its Spanish uh, Valencia factory to hand finish the cars. And this process includes further efforts in pursuit of the kind of refinement the brand thinks that a car of this kind should have. Now, an ordinary Mondeo is already impressive in this respect, so it didn't come as much of a surprise to us to find that with acoustic glass, uh, double glazing and extra noise insulation, this Vignale model is outstandingly quiet. 
further aiding the search for inner peace on diesel models, uh, though not on the petrol ones, is an active noise cancellation system. And here, three microphones inside the cabin detect engine noise levels and then transmit a nullifying counter frequency through the upgraded speakers. So, does it all work? Absolutely. We've been driving this diesel engine Vignale for quite a few miles and it's impressively hushed in here. You feel as though you're riding in a limousine, whichever seat you're in, and it makes every trip stress-free. Helping in the Vignale's quest to achieve such high levels of refinement are the engines it's offered with. Uh, Ford has skipped the lower-powered motors offered in the Mondeo and sticks to the more potent petrol and diesel units. Uh, we should start with the one that we're trying here, the 2-litre TDCI 180 PS diesel derivative, since the marketeers reckon that fully 82% of potential Vignale buyers are likely to choose it. It's easy to see why, given that this is the most affordable and most economic variant, plus it offers a wider range of buying choices, being the only derivative that's available with the option of manual transmission and all-wheel drive. Most buyers will stick with the six-speed PowerShift dual-clutch auto box I'm using here, though, a perfect partner for the torquey TDCI power plant that slurs effortlessly through the gears to reach 62 miles an hour in 8.7 seconds en route to 139 miles an hour flat out. Want more punch? Then your first port of call should be the 210 PS 2 litre bi turbo TDCI model. Here, torque rises from 400 to 450 Newton meters, propelling the Vignale towards the horizon with even greater urgency and improving those performance stats to 7.9 seconds and 145 miles an hour without a significant impact on running cost efficiency. Alternatively, you might want to take the petrol option, where the main choice is the 240 PS turbocharged 2 litre EcoBoost power plant that's borrowed from the Focused ST hot hatch. It's a predictably potent performer, dashing off the 0 to 62 miles per hour sprint in 7.9 seconds en route to 149 miles an hour. But the economy and emissions mean it'll be a rare sight in a market dominated by tax tied company car drivers. To appeal to them and to anyone else looking towards a greener style of driving, Ford is offering its hybrid powertrain in the Vignale, or at least it does in the saloon version anyway. Unlike the hybrid option you get in a rival Volkswagen Passat, this setup isn't one of the pricey plug-in sort, which means you don't get astonishing all-electric style fuel returns. Instead, a Mondeo Vignale hybrid has the more conventional type of petrol-electric setup that you'll find in a slightly cheaper but smaller and less powerful rival like uh, Toyota's Prius, where the engine cuts in and out to assist the electric propulsion as and when required. In the Ford's case, uh, the power plant is a 187 PS 2 litre unit whose efforts are supplemented by an 88 kilowatt electric motor driving the front wheels. There is another electric motor which is uh, used for regenerative charging only and a lithium ion battery pack with an output of 35 kilowatts along with a capacity of 1.4 kilowatt hours. The whole setup operating via the kind of CVT auto gearbox that's a normal feature in hybrids of this sort. On paper, the 173 newton metre torque figure this whole setup generates suggests that pulling power from a Vignale hybrid model might be in short supply. In fact, though, this petroelectric variant's acceleration is satisfactorily rapid, 62 miles an hour from rest occupying a quite acceptable 9.2 seconds on the way to 116 miles an hour. More of an issue is the CVT transmission's thrashiness. It only really settles back comfortably when you're cruising. Plus, the extra weight of that hybrid system's batteries has its effect on the ride and handling. Still, uh, you can use the car in electric-only mode for short distances, for near-silent driving and to save a bit on fuel. It all really comes down to what you want. I mentioned handling. Now, as I said at the beginning, this is a Mondeo, so it takes corners in its stride. Although not these days with quite the sharpness that previous versions used to display. Ford has dialed that back a bit in recent times, and to be fair, if it hadn't, an opulent variant like this one simply wouldn't have been credible. Having said that, the electrically assisted helm still gives good feedback and body roll is kept well in check. Plus, turning is aided by a clever integral link suspension system that's shared with Ford's latest Mustang sports car. 
a setup that at the same time plays its part in delivering a compliant ride that you shouldn't spoil by opting for the firmer sport suspension package. There's also prodigious front-end grip, aided by a clever torque vectoring system that lightly breaks the inside front wheel through tight bends, sharpening turning and ensuring that all that power gets right down onto the tarmac. Our car here has the added benefit of the optional intelligent all-wheel drive system, and it's a very clever setup. Measuring how the car's wheels are gripping the road surface every 16 milliseconds, and that's 20 times quicker than the time it takes to blink, the system can send up to 100% of engine torque to either the front or the rear wheels and make any required adjustments in just 100 milliseconds. Fitted to this Estate TDCI 180 variant, it creates a package that we can see some buyers preferring to a comparably priced compact SUV. Ford bills this Vignale very much as a standalone model and justifies that with a package of subtle but significant exterior upgrades. Now, whether that is quite enough to justify the premium being asked for this Mondeo variant is a call that you're going to have to make yourself. But if you're prepared to indulge in the details, then you may find yourself admiring the car's quietly opulent demeanour. Uh, inside, it's rather more obvious where your extra cash has been spent, but we'll get to that in a moment. To start with, though, let's focus on what's changed outside. Now, the effect Ford is aiming for here is restrained elegance rather than ostentation. And that's a fine balancing act, but one helped in this case by the standard Mondeo's inherently handsome lines. As for the Vignale embellishments, well, they start with a unique aluminium framed front grille that features a hexagonal pattern picked out on a dark matte metallic finish. You also get dynamic LED headlights with adaptive lighting, which adapt to road conditions and which turn with the bends. Further down, you'll find unique fog lamps with smart chrome trim. In profile, the Vignale refinements are less immediately obvious, but if you know your Mondeos, you might well pick up the dark chrome body side detailing and the chrome inserts on the door handles. There are also these exclusive 18-inch alloy wheels, which can be upgraded to 19-inch polished 10-spoke rims on request. Gloss black window pillar trims emphasise the long, sleek appearance, and the paintwork is bespoke too. We've got Vignale black here, but it's also possible to pick from five other special shades. As you can see, we've opted for the estate version, which will be popular since the only other body style option is the four-door saloon configuration that Mondeo buyers have traditionally ignored. With this station wagon variant, you get roof rails finished in chrome too. Head to the back of the Vignale and more chrome embellishes the tailpipes and the bumper trim. These are detail improvements though. As I suggested earlier, what's much more likely to sell you this car is its upgraded cabin ambiance. And you begin to feel that as soon as you pull open this pleasingly solid driver's door. Now, the whole interior is apparently pieced together by six dedicated Vignale craftspeople, and it certainly feels quite special. The lovely smell of this plush tuxedo leather upholstery strikes you immediately. The hide laser cut with a quilted finish that mimics the hexagonal design of that front grille. You can choose from uh, charcoal black or cashmere cream interior shades. And either way, there's beautiful stitching and also this contrasting band on the outer edge to another touch of class. As you might expect, the chairs themselves are heated and electrically adjustable. A 10-way package that features a memory function, so you don't need to reset it after another driver's been at the wheel. In this car, we've also got the multi-contour seat option, which cools the upholstery and also includes a massaging function. Look around you and the classy touches continue. More premium leather wraps this instrument panel and even the door panels feature it, complete with a tuxedo quilted stitching. Other Vignale touches include special ambient lighting, a unique key fob, a rear view camera and a 12 speaker Sony DAB stereo system that you access via this central fascia 8 inch SYNC 3 infotainment screen there to play its part in reducing button clutter and giving the cabin a cleaner, smarter feel.
The SYNC 3 package offers fast activation, easy app integration and most importantly allows you to duplicate the functionality of your smartphone onto the central fascia screen via either Apple CarPlay or the Mirrorlink Android Auto system. If you're not familiar with the SYNC system, it doesn't take long to adjust to it, with the central dash monitor divided into four colour-coded sectors that allow you to activate audio, phone, climate control and, where fitted, sat-nav functions via touchscreen buttons. Heating and ventilation is also covered off by switchgear below the screen, which is just as well since the display buttons can be a little fiddly to use. So instead of stabbing away at those, it's better to try and master the system's impressive voice activation functionality that allows you to issue simple one-shot commands uh, like play song to play a track from a CD, where am I to find out where you are, or even I'm hungry to bring up a list of local restaurants from the system's built-in Michelin guide. Directions can then be activated from the split-screen navigation display. All of this is as it would be in any normal upspec Mondeo, and the instrument cluster that you view through the leather-trimmed three-spoke multifunction steering wheel is also unchanged. Here, the main dials are enhanced by smart, clear TFT display screen technology. Practical touches include storage compartments dotted all around the cabin that are useful in terms of size and shape, and they include a reasonably sized glove box with an integrated shelf. Uh, two large cup holders sit here behind the gear stick, and there's a huge open tray at the bottom of the center console that's close to a 12 volt socket and which will be ideal for your phone. Uh, we like the little design touches that you can't see too. For example, the humidity sensor that stops the windows from fogging up and also delivers best-in-class cooling in hot weather. And the high-tech air filter, eight years in development, which is 50% more effective than its predecessor in blocking ultra-fine particles, dealing with 99% of pollen to help the quarter of Europeans who apparently now suffer from hay fever. Of course, you could argue that much of this Interior plushness could be duplicated on a German premium badged uh, compact executive rival if you were prepared to spend enough on it. What you couldn't duplicate in a model like that, though, is the experience this Mondeo Vignale offers in the rear. So let's see why. Quite simply, it's much more spacious back here. Three big adults across the back seat of an Audi A4 or a BMW 3 Series is a squash, and that's only slightly improved if you opt for something mainstream like a top spec Vauxhall Insignia or Volkswagen Passat. Here, though, it's no problem at all, with superb space for shoulders thanks to the class leading width of the cabin. Legs and knees are also well catered for thanks to these thinner front seat backs, and headroom is fine too, especially in this estate version. This car has the optional rear privacy glass fitted, and there are also optional sun blinds if you're determined to keep those paparazzi from getting a good look in. Uh, the outer two seats get Isofix child seat fastenings, but you might struggle to use those if your car has also been fitted with these optional inflatable seat belts. Now, we approve of the way that these help protect occupants from more serious injury in the event of a collision, but they are a little cumbersome to look at, and they'd also be awkward to work with if you were trying to fit a child seat. On to boot space, also more generous than you'd get in premium branded German rivals. On this estate version, there's an optional powered tailgate and it rises to reveal 500 litres of capacity, which curiously is uh, actually 25 litres less than the four-door version can offer. Still, at least that's with a standard mini spare wheel fitted. Go for the hybrid model and you don't get that, probably because the batteries needed for that variant's petrol electric system already eat into the boot space, reducing it to 458 litres. On this estate, a ski hatch allows you to poke through longer items without disturbing folk at the back. Uh, if you're carrying something really bulky and you need to push forward the 60-40 split folding rear seats, this station wagon body style comes into its own, offering a total of 1,605 litres with the mini spare fitted. In a conventional petrol or TDCI diesel Vignale saloon, the figure would be uh, 1,437 litres. With both body shapes, opting for a full-size spare will obviously slightly reduce these figures. Or, of course, you could increase them by, well, rather unwisely in our view, choosing the instant mobility system with its can of tyre sedent and air compressor.
So, bottom line time, what will this car cost and how much of a premium will that represent over what you'd pay for a top spec conventional Mondeo model? Time to find out. Well, Vignale prices start from just under £30,000 and range up to just under £34,000. To try and further differentiate this variant from its humbler stablemates, Ford doesn't offer it in hatchback guys, so buyers are limited either to a saloon or this estate body style, with this station wagon attracting a £1,500 premium. Over 80% of buyers opt for the 2-litre TDCI 180 PS diesel derivative we've been trying here. It's the most affordable variant in the lineup and the only one offered with manual transmission. But most will want it with the power shift auto box that we've been trying here, creating a package that'll cost you around £31,000. Now, you have to have this engine and the auto transmission if you're to take up the £1,500 option of all-wheel drive. As for other options in the Mondeo Vignale range, well, if we had a budget of around £32,000, then we would be tempted by the 210 PS 2-litre TDCI bi-turbo diesel model. We wouldn't, though, be so interested in the petrol options. The 2-litre hybrid at around £30,000 and the 240 PS 2-litre T EcoBoost model at around £31,000. Whatever your preference, you are going to be interested to know just how much extra the Vignale proposition is going to cost you over the plushest version of an ordinary Mondeo. Uh, the answer, of course, depends upon your starting point. So the plushest Mondeo in the standard range has titanium trim, and from here, the premium to own a Vignale model with the same engine would be just under £3,900, or £3,450 if you go for the hybrid version. However, Ford does offer Mondeo titanium buyers a titanium X-Pack for an extra £2,000, including LED adaptive headlamps, uh, rear privacy glass and leather seats with a standard finish that are powered and heated in the front. So what it really boils down to um, is that in opting for a Vignale over the ritziest version of an ordinary Mondeo, you're paying uh, £1,900 extra for a smarter look, a classier quality of leather in the interior, an upgraded 12-speaker Sony infotainment system, a rear-view camera and probably slightly higher residual values. Now, for a number of buyers, we can see that proposition being quite a tempting one, particularly as it includes a much higher quality of dealer service. The Vignale models are only sold at premium Ford store locations in the UK, uh, and at this model's launch there were 55 of these. Enough, says the brand, to ensure that 90% of the population will be within an hour's drive of one. Each of these dealerships will have a dedicated Vignale lounge area, and owners will be assigned a relationship manager who will be on hand at the dealership and via a hotline to look after their needs. When the time comes for servicing, you'll enjoy a free collection and return service and after every garage visit, your car will get a complimentary car wash and premium valet treatment. All very nice, but will it be tempting enough to interest customers currently driving the premium branded compact executive models that have decimated the Mondeo's market share in recent years? Well, let's see. This is where the car magazines don't tell you the whole story. If we take this 2-litre TDCI 180 PS Mondeo Vignale as an example, it's true that a comparable BMW 320D, Audi A4 2-litre TDI, Jaguar XC 2-litre D or Mercedes C220D would cost you about the same. In terms of spec, though, that's like comparing economy travel with first class. There's a world of difference. Spec any of those four cars to Vignale levels and you're looking at paying the best part of £40,000. And for that, you still wouldn't get the same level of dealer attention. Are there other options that you could look at? Perhaps. We won't spend too much time thinking about top-spec versions of mainstream medium-range models like the Vauxhall Insignia, uh, the Mazda 6 or the Toyota Aventus because if you were looking at one of those, then you'd be much more likely to be comparing it to a titanium-spec Mondeo. Uh, we would, though, point out that a top-spec Volkswagen Passat R-Line costs pretty much the same as a comparable Mondeo Vignale. As for other options, well, uh, Citroen's DS brand aims to replicate a Vignale feel, but a comparable version of the Mark's DS5 model would cost slightly more and in terms of spec give you slightly less. Now the same will be true of comparable versions of the Volvo S60 or V60 and also the Lexus IS.
So, if having considered all of that, you conclude that a Mondeo Vignale is what you really want, well, then you're going to need to know exactly what's included in that standard spec. So, time to take a look at that. Now, we've already touched on some of what you can expect, primarily the premium quilted tuxedo interior leather trim that's not only of a higher hand-stitched quality than you could ever have on an ordinary Mondeo, but also extends to the dashboard and to the doors to give the cabin a really special feel. And on top of that, there are those extra chrome exterior highlights, unique Vignale 18-inch wheels and a package to improve refinement that includes acoustic glass and an active noise cancellation system on diesel models. Plus, there are also the features that I mentioned earlier, the rear-view camera, the 12-speaker Sony DAB audio system, LED adaptive headlights, powered heated front seats and rear privacy glass. As you'd expect, all this builds on the kind of spec you get in a standard plush Mondeo. Things like uh, satellite navigation, cruise control, front and rear parking sensors, a key-free system with a power starter button and a quick clear heated windscreen to help you on icy mornings. You also get the useful Ford MyKey setup that recognises your favourite driving settings from an individually programmed ignition key. Uh, when daylight fades, there's front and rear ambient lighting to cast a soft glow throughout the cabin. Plus, you can change the interior mood with the 8-inch SYNC 3 touchscreen as it controls the music, as well as the satellite navigation, uh, the climate control and the Bluetooth. You can make and receive phone calls using voice commands and the system will even read out text messages to you, so <laughs> you better keep it clean. This system works 10 times quicker than the previous generation and it integrates with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. It lets you play music from your phone, uh, use apps via the touchscreen and even to access them via voice command with Sync AppLink. On to options. Well, we'll start with the aesthetics. We would want to upgrade to the larger 19-inch 10-spoke alloy wheels and possibly consider the unique extra-cost Nocciola paint colour. As for driving stuff, well, stiffer sports suspension is available, but we think your money would be better spent on the active park assist system that will steer you into tight spaces. On an estate model, uh, we'd want to look at self-leveling suspension, which ensures that the car remains at the correct height when the boot's loaded, um, or if you're towing a trailer. Speaking of which, you can, of course, uh, order fixed or retractable tow bars for the Vignale too. Moving inside, you can add a heated steering wheel and a powered adjustable steering column, or you could pamper yourself with multi-contour seats that have a massage function. On the saloon version, uh, you can order a tilt and slide glass sunroof, while on this estate, there's the option of a panorama roof with an opening section. And you also have an optional powered tailgate. Now, let's have a look at what you get to keep you from harm. There are the anti-lock brakes and ESC stability control systems that you would expect, as well as emergency brake assist to give you maximum stopping power when you need it most. Should the worst happen, the Vignale has driver, passenger and side airbags, as well as curtain bags and another for the driver's knees. You can also switch off the passenger's front one so you can fit a child seat using the Isofix mounts. And there are two more sets of Isofix securing points for kiddie chairs in the back, and you'll have to use those if you're using child seats and you've opted for the clever extra-cost inflatable rear belts that we've been trying here. These help to spread the load across the occupant's chest to reduce injuries. On to electronic safety features. For the driver, there's hill start assist to stop this fall from rolling backwards when pulling away on a steep incline. There's also lane keeping assist that vibrates the steering wheel if the car wanders over a road marking. And if the driver doesn't react, then the system will guide the car back into the correct path. More help comes from the standard traffic sign recognition, which pictures road signs as you pass them and then displays them for you on the dash. Plus, there's also a driver alert system that continually monitors your reactions for drowsiness as you drive. Also included is an emergency assistance feature, which is part of the SYNC 3 infotainment system. This will automatically contact the rescue services um, if one of the airbags is deployed in an accident. Um, and uh, you can also use it to patch through directly if you want to. If you want to further enhance the safety of your Mondeo Vignale, there are several options to choose from. 
One that we had expected to be standard is the active city stop pre-collision assist with pedestrian detection system, which helps to avoid low speed accidents by applying the brakes, even if the driver doesn't touch the pedal when the car senses an impending crash. It works at up to 20 miles an hour, while active braking helps to lessen the damage in higher speed collisions using the same technology. At speed on the highway, adaptive cruise control with collision mitigation maintains a safe gap to the car in front, even as it changes its pace. Another optional function that's very useful on multi-lane roads is the blind spot information system. That's technology that stops you from dangerously pulling out to overtake when there's a car in your blind spot. This Vignale may be an upscale model, but it isn't any less efficient than an ordinary Mondeo to run. Check the specs and you'll find that combined cycle consumption and uh, carbon dioxide figures are identical where the cars concerned have the same gearboxes and wheel sizes. But will that be enough to enable this car to stack up to the extremely efficient returns of the prestige branded German compact executive rivals this Vignale variant targets? Let's see. This car's cause is certainly helped by the considerable efforts that Ford went into in improving efficiency in the standard Mondeo range. The brand's now well-established Econetic technology delivers smart regenerative charging, which harvests energy that would otherwise be lost under braking. Plus, there's the active grille shutter system, which at standstill and at start-off keeps a clever front grille vent open to cool the engine, but automatically closes it when you pick up speed, improving aerodynamics and helping to save fuel. In addition, as you'd expect, there's the usual auto start-stop system that cuts the engine when you don't need it, when you're stuck in traffic or waiting at the lights. Uh, diesel models also get more efficient cylinder head and fuel injection designs, plus a lean nitrogen oxide exhaust trap after-treatment system for cleaner emissions. Does it all make enough of a difference in this closely fought executive marketplace? Well, let's start our analysis by looking at the figures for the engine in the car we have here, the strongest selling 2.0-litre TDCI 180 PS turbo diesel. Uh, stick with a manual gearbox and it delivers a combined consumption figure of 62.8 miles per gallon, whether you opt for the saloon or this estate. CO2 emissions are rated at 117 grams per kilometre for the saloon and fractionally more for the wagon, although both body styles sit in the same company car and road tax bands. You'll probably want this model's power shift auto gearbox though, in which case the figures fall to 57.7 miles per gallon and 126 grams per kilometre uh, for the estate. Go for this auto transmission and you also get the option of the intelligent all-wheel drive system that we've been trying here, which will hit those returns by about 10%. So, is that competitive? Well, it's not far off. A standard BMW 320D or Mercedes C 220D isn't a great deal more efficient than that, despite being significantly less spacious inside. The other diesel in the Vignale lineup is the twin turbo 210 PS 2 litre variant. It's only offered with that power shift auto gearbox and, like the less powerful diesel, has a particulate filter to sieve out soot before it has a chance to escape from the exhaust. As a result, this more potent unit still offers a good account of itself in saloon guys delivering 130 grams per kilometre of CO2 along with 56.5 miles per gallon combined consumption. Off the estate and those figures change to 134 grams per kilometre and 54.3 miles per gallon. You won't of course be expecting those kinds of returns if you go for the conventional petrol derivative with its 240 PS 2 litre EcoBoost power plant. Uh, this version uh, comes only in auto form, but in this case, the transmission in question doesn't feature efficient dual-clutch power shift technology, uh, helping to explain the relatively mediocre readings on offer. With the saloon version, you're talking 171 grams per kilometre of CO2 and a combined consumption figure of 38.2 miles per gallon, while with the estate, the figures are 176 grams per kilometre and 37.2 miles per gallon. If you want to go further, then there's always the petrol-electric hybrid saloon version with its significant road tax savings. 
Uh, since this variant fuels itself with petrol, the returns aren't quite a match for the TDCI 180 diesel derivative, unless you consider the quoted urban consumption figure rated at an astonishing 100.9 miles per gallon. With all types of driving taken into account, though, the figures come back down to earth, with 67.3 miles per gallon supposedly possible on the combined cycle and a CO2 return registering at 99 grams per kilometre. That's providing you make good use of the L setting in the CVT Auto gearbox that increases the effect of regenerative braking. Another advantage of the Vignale sharing its mechanical parts with the Mondeo is it enjoys the same 18,000 mile service intervals, although that falls to every 12,500 miles if you go for the hybrid variant. Though any Ford dealer can, in theory, carry out routine maintenance on this car, the brand prefers that Vignale models are looked after by its more prestigious Ford store retail points. At the time this model's launched, there were 55 of these um, all around the country, and the company reckons that 90% of the population is within an hour's drive of a Ford store. Not that servicing appointments will be an issue for the Mondeo Vignale owner. When the time comes, you simply pick up the phone to the dedicated Vignale customer relations representative who will have been assigned to look after your ownership experience. Uh, they'll send someone to collect the car and then bring it back again. And on its return, you'll find that the vehicle will have been treated to a complimentary car wash and also a premium valet service. Don't expect that from your local Mercedes, Audi or BMW dealer. To take the hassle out of paying for scheduled work on the car, there are two Ford Protect Premium plans on offer. The first uh, covers two years and two services, while the other extends to three years and a trio of garage visits. These packages can be passed on to another owner when the car's sold, which might help residual values, an area in which this Ford needs all the assistance it can get. After the industry standard three-year, 60,000-mile period of use, independent experts predict that this car will retain about 32% of its original value, which, predictably, is a great deal less than the premium-branded German compact executive saloon can manage. Spec up that 3 Series, that A4 or that C-Class to match Mondeo Vignale standards of trim, though, and you'll find that the difference would narrow quite a lot. Plus, once deals are taken into account, we'd expect that you'll probably be paying a lot less for this Ford up front, at least if you or your company were buying it outright. In other words, it pays to consider the complete picture. Finally, we'll talk about insurance. Uh, many business users will, of course, have the cost of this included as part of a lease deal. If you're arranging your own cover, though, we'll give you the relevant groupings. All Mondeo Vignales with this particular model's 2-litre TDCI 180 PS diesel engine sit in Group 27, and it's the same for the Pokia 210 PS 2-litre TDCI by turbo variant. The petrol-electric hybrid resides in Group 21, while the 2-litre EcoBoost 240 BS petrol derivative attracts a Group 29 rating. In every conceivable area where the Mondeo excels, the Vignale takes it to a higher level. This is most obvious with the limousine-like hush of this Ford. All of the extra soundproofing, along with the double-glazed door windows and that very clever noise-cancelling technology, mean that you waft along with barely a murmur from the outside world. It's an extremely agreeable way to travel. The Vignale may major on comfort, but it can also cut it in the corners. True, it's no BMW 3 Series, but we think it's every bit as good as, say, an Audi A4 or a Mercedes C-Class when the going gets twisty. And you're likely to make a saving on cars of that sort that might well enable you to stretch into equipping your Vignale with all-wheel drive traction, at which point it starts to become a pretty dynamically desirable package, or at least it is with conventional petrol or, more likely, diesel power. To be frank, we're less convinced about the hybrid package. But can the figures ever really stack up here? Well, the magazines will tell you not, pointing out that a Mondeo Vignale is no cheaper than a prestige-branded compact executive saloon and will depreciate quicker. So is that true? Well, yes and no. The basic stats might say that, but in the real world, this Ford is a lot cheaper than its premium rivals once you equip them to match its leather-lined spec. 
and if you were then to first take into account the reduction in residuals that such a fully kitted up 3 Series A4 or C-Class would attract, then consider the more affordable upfront deal that you like to get on this Ford, and finally package the whole thing up into a whole life cost figure, well, we think you might be surprised by how appealing the proposition on offer here might end up looking. But of course, owning a car of this kind isn't all down to running cost figures. It's also about the way it makes you feel. So will this car's extra bright work and bespoke cabin be enough to compensate for the lack of a BMW, an Audi or a Mercedes badge on the bonnet? Well, that's your call, of course. But if you're secure enough in yourself to make it, well then, we think you might enjoy a Vignale. It's a finer kind of Ford.